Hello everyone and welcome to the Albert and Billy show. I'll have to probably talk in the microphone a little bit today, Papa. Uh, well, as most of you know, I've been out of uh, my voice. I've lost my voice. Uh, I had COVID like a, a month ago, but got over that. But really, the my allergies have been more of a problem than that. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, the pollen is out, that's for sure. And it caused me to lose my voice like I couldn't talk at all for two days pop pop wow. like, at all but so I do apologize it's it's not quite back yet but it's a lot better than what it was and yeah because <laughs> you heard me when it was pretty right pretty rough you're not up to par yet no no it's nowhere near what it should be but so I do apologize for that folks just bear with me but uh, good to be here with y'all you're listening to us here on WUAT radio and watching us on channel 18, BTC Fiber Television, and the BTC Fiber YouTube channel. Uh, I always say, go on there and check it out, like, subscribe, comment. I don't think I left anything out, I hope I didn't. You can check all the episodes out of, of the Albert and Billy Show and all the original shows on BTC Fiber on the YouTube channel. So get on there and check it out, folks. Uh, we appreciate that. You ever get any bad comments? Knock on wood, I haven't seen any yet, but a lot of times I don't, I won't look, just, you know. <laughs> All right, see you later. There is, I mean, though on some of them there is a lot of comments, you know, but uh, I don't necessarily mean I'll go through them and look, you know. Usually I, if I see a good one at first, I'll just stop there. <laughs> but hopefully they're all good. <laughs> But uh, Papa, uh, well, today is, let's see, what is, we're fifth. on the 5th today. So, today's April the 5th, but we have a big event happening on April the 8th. And uh, we had a very similar experience to this uh, back in 2017. It was a total eclipse on that day. Total eclipse. And uh, that was one of the coolest things, maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. You remember we had the glasses and uh, people were set out all over town watching, but it was total, you know, so it went, it was dark, but it's such a different kind of dark. It's so cool looking right? and it's not like we get to see things like that very often because we don't. And this one, it's not going to be like that. It's not a total eclipse this time, but it's 95%. It's pretty Partial. dang good. Yeah. So uh, it's still going to be it's still going to be good and pretty cool to see, and uh, I think this one lasts a little bit longer. Yeah, this one uh, will last an estimated two hours and thirty five minutes. So it won't be a total one, but but it'll still be really cool looking though, guys, because it's ninety five percent, and so it'll be two hours and thirty five minutes. That's going to be this Monday, April when, the eighth. When does it start? Uh, that's what I'm looking Okay, it will begin at 12.46 p.m. Right. And uh, should be at it. Okay, and it should be at its max at 2.05 p.m. There you go. So remember that, folks. At 2.05 would be the best time to look. And it ends from at 3.21. To, at 3.21 when it ends. So uh, a lot of places are having things where you can come watch it, you know. Which is good. That's how they. That's how they did on the total eclipse back in uh, 2017. So um, let's see. Now, safety in viewing the eclipse is recommended. I remember that from last time. While this is not a total eclipse, Tennesseans are encouraged to protect their eyes during the event. Past eclipses have resulted in viewers sustaining eye injuries, uh, some severe and permanent, due to either looking directly at it with no protection or by using eclipse viewing glasses that had been falsely marketed as providing protection. Wow, that's terrible. I had not thought of that. No. Warns the, the Tennessee Attorney General's office. Uh, we're reminded that where you buy your viewing gear matters, okay? Events of this nature often bring about unscrupulous sellers who may put profit over safety. That's terrible, and if you do that, you're a piece of crap in my mind. But anyway, to help consumers find Eclipse glasses, the American Astronomical Society has provided the following list 
of reliable sellers and distri distributors whose products do meet uh, the, the safety standards that they need. So there is a list in the Bledsonian uh, suppliers of safe solar viewers and filters, uh, solar eclipse across America. There's a couple, but there's more listed in here. So uh, that'll help too. Now it says uh, solar eclipse occurs when the moon blocks any part of the sun's bright face, which that's true. But it's going to be blocking 95 percent. So uh, that's that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's see the events on this. Uh, I'll start it out because they're having an event right across the street. That's where a lot of people will be. The farmers market. It opens for the season this Saturday. Okay. Um, it opens, yeah, this Saturday is when it's going to open. That's that's important too. Saturday morning, and it's going to be, of course, from April through September. And it'll always be open from 9 a.m. until 12 noon. That comes from Gina Lansing, the market manager. <clears throat> now, the farmer's market is open to all Bledsoe County residents to set up and sell homegrown or homemade items such as fruits, vegetables, woodwork, and baked goods, canned items, candles, art, jewelry, and more. And trust and believe they do have all that and more, don't they? Um, but let's see. Anyway, uh, vendors can check in on the Pineville Farmers Market and Main Street social media pages weekly to let those coming to browse and buy know they are coming, what they may have at their stand that day. Yeah, I encourage anybody to do that. That's smart. Let people know you're going to be there. Come May the 4th, the Farmer's Market and Main Street stage, they're going to be bustling as the first cruise-in of the year is held. So remember, the first cruise-in is going to be on May the 4th, guys. And that will also kick off the Summer Night Concert Series. That's good. Uh, and they're, they're held the first Saturday of each month through October. Summer Nights is made possible by its sponsor, BTC Fiber. So, good job, BTC Fiber. They're making it possible. The first concert's going to feature a jazz swing band. They're called the Glen Gary Unit. What a name. Music will be from 5 to 7 p.m. on each of the concerts, and the cruise ends will always start at 4 p.m. In addition to the music, a special event is being planned. The Don't Duck Mental Health event held by Bledsoe Aware. Good, That's, that'll be Miss Ridley, remember? Yeah. She was on here about that one year. Okay, that's good. That's gonna be planned. We'll let you know uh, the date for that. Also planned, there'll be Trunk and Treasure on Main Street, Soak Up the Arts series, Movie Under the Stars, and Stepping Out Throughout the Summer Months. That's something new. So they're adding some new stuff to it. And on Thursday nights, they're bringing the line dancing back. I like that, because that was a big success last year. That was the first year. So yeah, the line dancing folks will be at the Main Street stage, and it will begin in May. It's a fun time to come dance the night away. And for more information about the farmer's market, you can call Gina Lansing at 423-883-1529. That's 883-1529, but I'm going to get to, let's see, let me go on to about the eclipse of some of the places. I know the farmer's market is one of them where people will be watching it. People will be set out all through town watching it, won't they, pop up? sure they will. That's how they were uh, at the last one, uh, but it is really cool, though. So let's see if I can... Find out some of the places you can go. I know you can go to the, uh, I know the Lucky Star, it, you can go there and watch it. And they're selling drinks and, and food and stuff like that. I do know that. Uh, let's see. I just want to see about the places. Um, let me see here. I just don't want to miss a place. I do, the Farmer's Market though you can. Uh, and the Lucky Star. And I'll try to find uh, some more of the places. There's just so much information on this, Papa. It's hard to find it all. I've not heard of anything in town. Those are the only two that I've heard of. But but you'll be but you can sit anywhere and watch this, guys. Yeah. Anywhere. The sky just is be, yours. Exactly. Just uh, be sure to, to get your safety glasses 
you know, uh, just to be on the safe side, I do recommend there that. So anyway, that's this Monday. So big day for Monday, Papa. That's April the 8th. Yes, but do you realize what time of that will be after midnight? Well, it's in the day. It's in the oh, day. It's yeah. PM. Well, no, it's it's, PM. it's in the daytime. It's yeah. PM, but it's, you know it's twelve noon basically, right? Well, how twelve does noon. The moon block the sun in the daytime. It it does. That's how it done last time, but it done it totally. That's why it's so cool though, because it's in the daytime, but it's dark. Wow. And. I thought it was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. Well, when Jesus was crucified, there was darkness over the land for three hours. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Three hours. I think, and the, I think the eclipse, it's just, it's such a unique, beautiful thing to see. You it know what I'm saying? It doesn't very often. And it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, we'll probably never see one like we did in 2017 again. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's amazing we're getting to see one <laughs> again at all. But this will be 95 percent but yeah it's in the day but like i said it's a different kind of dark it, it, it's so cool looking i, I thought it was at night, at night. It no was it's just <clears throat> it looks like it's not but it's in the day <laughs> but so you like we were saying you can watch it wherever you're at anywhere but i knew those, those two places you know i've talked about you can come there um so that if i find any more locations i'll let you guys know but uh some more announcements um april the 6th which is tomorrow papa the bargain basement will be open once again at the methodist church yeah. remember the thrift shop is sponsored by the united methodist women and proceeds used are for missions uh, they'll have clothes books movies cds that are one dollar a grocery bag most other items are one dollar unless marked Final price is at the checkout, a uh, person's discretion. Clean un or clean usable items are always appreciated and may be brought during open hours. And uh, let's see. Well, and also uh, April 6th, tomorrow, uh, you can go out to the Griffith Fire Department, uh, come and enjoy a baked potato fundraising event. Uh, that is tomorrow from 5 to 7 p.m. out the Griffith Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, so you can dine in or carry out at the department. Plates include loaded baked potato, drink, and dessert for $10. Remember, proceeds do benefit the fire department. Got any questions, though, just call 881-3310. That's 881-3310 if you have any questions about that. So... Well, I'm gonna let you uh, talk a minute, Papa. I, right, I was gonna... supposed to say about the uh, first Southern clothes closet, but you know that it's the it's twice a month, right? It's on Tuesday. Tuesdays, is uh, it? And it's a good deal. Yeah. People come, and uh, sometimes the parking lot is full. Of people. Yeah, I've seen it like that. They've been doing I think it for it a good while. One, starts at one o'clock. Yeah, here's here's the. Thing of it, I knew I saw it. Uh, it's the first. It says the first and third Tuesday of each month. So uh, that's twice a month, folks. Remember the first and third Tuesday. Uh, the clothes closet is open, and they have been giving clean, gently used clothing away to the folks in Bledsoe County for the last 25 years, yeah. at no cost to anyone. They try to have out seasonal clothes and shoes. They also have donated house supplies and furniture. This ministry is supported by free tax deductible con contributions. That's good too. If you know of anyone who needs help, please send them to the church. If you have items to donate, please see Miss Jolene in the church office if you need a receipt for your donation. The church also offers emergency services for things like house fires, flood, damage and more you know for any natural disaster so that's good too that's good so yeah so now i'll let you take over <laughs> okay finally <laughs> we do have uh the open mm -hmm. table is going to be at the united methodist church oh cool uh, it's going to be uh monday i'm glad they're bringing it back mm -hmm. from four well uh, wait a minute mm. that'll be on monday the Oh, uh, the 29th. Maybe it's the other 29th, but it's back. I'm glad they're bringing it back. It says it'll be okay, 11:30 a.m. to 12:30. Okay, 
And good, uh, good. they're going to uh, uh, have this, um, I guess it would be every month? Yeah, it's a monthly thing. It's just been, it's been, you know, they've not had it for a year or so, so people have missed that. So I'm glad it's coming back. Open table. Yeah, the That's open table. Be, be, and everyone is... Everybody, uh, everybody. It's a free meal. Free meal. Okay, tomorrow morning you can mm -hmm. get a breakfast at the rescue squad. Ooh, they're always uh, good. <laughs> that will be um, from six o'clock in the morning until ten. And uh, mm -hmm. the good plumber is the sponsor for this event. Okay. Uh, it will cost you ten dollars to have biscuits and gravy, and potatoes, and uh, it's you'll good. have bacon and sausage and fried bologna. <laughs> yeah. You'll have eggs and pancakes and fruit. Dang. Doesn't mention anything. Wait a minute. What? Where's this one at again? Frisky Squad. They're having pancakes. It says there pancakes. There we go. They're catching on. We've been saying somebody else, you know. Was, Fall Creek Falls don't have to be the only place that does pancakes and waffles. Good That's job, good Rescue deal. Squad. I like that. Good deal. Also, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, on April the 13th, uh, Next Saturday. there's going to be a Rook tournament over here at the Embers Ice Cream Shop. Yeah, buddy. And it buddy. will start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. You will have to pay $10 per person mm -hmm. for the entry fee, but this entry fee includes, entry fee includes uh, lunch, Mm -hmm. Drink, chips, and ice cream. It's exactly. And it's well will, worth it. And they will give trophies for the first and second place teams. That's right. That's right. And it's double elimination. So you, you, go. you might get to play all day. Exactly. You may do it. <laughs> and it starts early enough where you wouldn't be there all night. So I like that. Yeah, that's a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Also, under birthdays, we have yeah. Don McLeod had a birthday. This is belated. Mm -hmm. it, it was recorded on Sunday. Yeah, uh, 69 his years young. On, his birthday was on Saturday, evidently. Yeah, it was. And he's 69 years old. So wish him yeah. a happy birthday if you see him anywhere. Uh, well, so I like how I said it better, but he's 69 years young. <laughs> 69 years young. It's a pretty good way to put it. <laughs> I like that better than old. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible to be old. They well, say it. Uh, somebody you know, says. You as you feel. Was that about you going to say? Somebody says it's the golden years, but there's nothing gold about it. <laughs> there's nothing gold about it. <laughs> well, I think we got all the uh, announcements for you guys. If we miss one, we'll, we'll be sure to get it to you later. But that's a lot of info right there. That's but, a lot of information. But it is definitely Monday, folks. Don't forget about the... Uh, Partial eclipse. eclipse for sure. That's a big one. All right. Well, it's trivia time. I've Papa. got some trivia questions <laughs> for you. Well, uh, my lifeline is ready to, just in case. <laughs> if the world has 24 time zones, how many are that. in the United States and name them? Okay. Give me a minute because that's a tough one. You know, I didn't know there's 24 time zones. That's learned something every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we're on Central, we're on Central. <clears throat> so there's one, and then there's uh, Eastern, That's there's two. two. Now, when I went out West, that was, uh, was that Pacific? Pacific and that as was, far West as you can get. Yeah, cause, yeah, we were like three hours behind, I had to get uh, used yeah. to that. And uh, Mountain. Mountain, That's four. So four, you okay, got it. good deal. Okay. Um, in. Dickens classic A Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the cripple's son? Uh, uh, Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Yeah. You're on the roll. That's two for <laughs> two. Two for two. Okay. What was the name of the culprit in A Christmas Carol? What was the man's name that was uh, kind of the main character and changed character. a lot? That would be Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer yeah. Scrooge. You're three for three. You know what? Those two characters probably the most popular characters from that that book actually tiny tim and scrooge yes but now you got to remember some more some more oh yeah there's definitely some more those are the ones the that seem to stand out the end of the tale old scrooge buys a large turkey who was the turkey for mm, that 
I don't remember. Is that, it's Tiny Tim's family, though, yeah, isn't Tiny it? Tiny Tim's okay. family. Okay. Because he finally gets a heart at the end, don't he? <laughs> okay. The, but his employee. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. What was his name? Uh, no, is that Tiny Tim's dad? Is that why he Tiny done it? Tim's yeah. Dad. I just can't never remember his name. Bob. Bob. Cratchit. Okay. Cratchit. Okay. How many ghosts visit Scrooge during the night? Mm. Well, how many ghosts? Don't really. I think it's four, really, because don't his old business partner uh, visit him first to tell him about the three ghosts okay. coming. That's that's true. I had not about thought about forgot that. about. Yeah. So that makes it four, okay. Mm. But there are only three ghosts. What yeah. are the three names of the ghosts? Oh man, dang it! Ooh, lifeline, my need you on this. The ones of the past, maybe Christmas past. Ghost of Christmas past. I guess those are the future. Christmas future, but what would be the one oh, that man. is missing? Past and future. What is present? Present. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> what was his business partner's name? Now is that the one that visits him first? You yeah. know. Okay. I think it's Jacob something. Jacob Car Marley. Yes, I'm on a roll. Okay. <laughs> What word and where are we? Uh, okay, what word here that we have in Pikeville and Bledsoe County that mm -hmm. is suggestive that Indians were once here? What name is associated mm -hmm. with- Trail of Tears. What now? The Trail of Tears. Trail of Tears is Indians. Yeah, I thought you said Indians. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> but I said this is something that's here. Trail of Tears mm. is uh, Arrowheads. Arrowheads is a good but, guess too. But give me a name that is symbolic oh, of uh, Indian lore that once existed here in. Pilot. I don't. I don't know which ones were here though. I really don't. What's the name of this valley? Sequachi. So Sequachi is an oh, Indian okay. name. Okay. 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 Were you to go to Chattanooga, cool. what's the number one Indian name that's left oh, in man. Hamilton County? <laughs> well, I bar since I barely got that one, <laughs> uh, give me a clue. That's cool. <clears throat> it's uh, it's in the water. Mm. It's on the water. Mm. Hang on. It's, it's just, what does it start with? It's a, it starts with an M and it's Dang it. a, it's a shoe that the Indians wore. Lifeline, you know what? I know where he's going. It's moccasin. Moccasin. It's, okay. It's like Chickamauga. 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 Is water, in, in That's where I start thinking Chickamauga of the water. Okay. But we have several evidences that the Definitely. Indians once were here. Definitely. And there you go. Well, is that, well, I think I done pretty darn good. You then. did well. You did well. <laughs> All right, folks. So that's it for Papa's famous trivia. Coming up after the commercial break, though, we'll have some sports of all sorts for you. It's going to be a little depressing. But anyway, <laughs> we'll have that for you, along with some good old Albertology and, of course, some jokes. Oh, yes. I've oh, yeah. forgotten that. <laughs> that's all coming up after the break, folks. Stick around. You need a bank that you can depend on. Here at Citizens Truck County Bank, we have the most dependable staff that you will ever meet. Call in, you will not get an automated attendant, you'll get a person. But on the other side, we have all the technology that anyone would need from apps to online banking to bill pay. So please come and grow with us as we're about to celebrate our 50th year. We are the only community bank you will ever need. Support small business and shop DunlapMercantile.com. Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative. 
connecting the Sequatchie Valley to the world. At Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter, we're committed to be better. Better prices, better vehicles, a better experience. Your Jason Lewis Dunlap Supercenter understands that you rely on us to provide you with the highest quality of used vehicles. With over 350 pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. So what are you waiting for? Let us show you a better experience with the Jason Lewis Automotive family. Come visit us at Rankin Avenue here in Dunlap or on the web at DunlapSuperCenter.com. Welcome back, folks, to the Albert and Billy Show here on WUAT Radio and Channel 18, BTC Fiber Television and the BTC Fiber YouTube channel. And we want to thank our sponsors our sponsors, real quick here. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. Yes, we so do. So here we go. A big thank you to the following <coughs> people and businesses. Citizens Tri-County Bank, Bilbury Insurance, Scotty's of Potville, as you say, home of the Scotty Burger, the Little Burgers, the offices of Janine Boynton, Lisa Wheeler, and Michael Walker. Thank you. Uh, Farm Bureau Insurance. Go see Matt Massengale and his friendly staff down in South Potville, right next to another sponsor, Putnam Reed Funeral Home. They're as south as south can get in Potville, there as we say. <laughs> Unless you get to school. That's, that's yeah, they're right in that area. Uh, the Morgan Brothers, uh, remember they got a buffet now. Do you know that, Papa? Uh, it's good. So check out their buffet. And of course, with Morgan Brothers, you have uh, the Bankwalker Brewery. Uh, they're open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, they have really good food. Uh, you can watch games in there, obviously. Uh, have a good meal it's it's like it's a really really nice place it's just they've done a great job in there of designing that place um it's like going to uh i don't know old charlie's or ruby tuesdays or somewhere like that watching a ball game i mean it's it, that's what it's like and also with them you have the potville family restaurant and remember they they only serve breakfast they're open every morning and uh i highly recommend the waffle that's my favorite thing they got is the waffle and nickel row antiques and they are open now they're back gail's not here today but still they're back so it's nice to have them back open come check them out they literally have a little bit of everything i kid you not including marbles <laughs> that's right including that and we can't mention cliff and gail without mentioning their other new business uh spring street antiques literally a block away isn't it they've got a nice sign up there yeah they really do what well, we're uh, working on uh, filming on location in there as well she she wants to show oh, that well, place too I'll, so I'll blame her. so we'll have to make that happen as well uh it's lola's of course just a hop skipping away down the street here uh she's back and at it it's glad to see that milldale outdoor adventures uh I did run into uh, Michelle Campbell at uh, at a store not long ago. Remember last year we were going to film there, yeah. but <clears throat> weather and things like that. There's just we just never could quite get it together. But they still want to do that, so we're, we're going to make that happen this year. We're we're going to film there because that's a beautiful place that they've got. That's called Milldale Outdoor Adventures uh, State. Well, I've already said State Farm Insurance, Nick Smith and his friendly staff. Go see them at State Farm. Um, Lee Station Baptist Church. And when you think of them, you also have the House of Hope. They help yeah. a lot of people, too. Uh, the Daily Stop on the Bypass. And check out their pizza. I'm telling you, it's good. And it's quilting time. Our newest, uh, and they're one of the newer businesses, too, here in Pottville. Uh, they're open Monday thursday and friday or monday through thursday and friday 11 to 4 I, i'm assuming that's how that is uh now it's going to be a much bigger store here pretty yeah. soon they have the section where dr uh, smith. smith was but the loom part which is enormous uh, they're making a lot of progress on it so that used to be a grocery store really what about that carolyn's uncle owned that really 
Fred. Wow. He's a, he's the Fred one that built, he, he's one oh. that built uh, Burns Lake. I didn't know that either. Well, that's I cool. I was the first one to get to fish in it. Well, that's he good. He stocked it, and then he said, uh, Albert, it's ready to fish. Well, dang. Can't beat that. <laughs> so I got to go down there and fish before first, anybody ever got to fish. That's right. <laughs> that's saying something. <laughs> Well, it's time for uh, sports, and like I said, it's depressing. Uh, interesting, though, a lot, a lot going on in sports because it's March Madness. Yes, it's uh, That's still well, playing uh, out. the women's final will be Sunday, and the men's final will be Monday. Yeah, we had the final four set in both. On the men, it's uh, Purdue. Uh, NC State made the final four. Couldn't believe that because they were an 11 seed. UConn men's in the final four. And uh, LSU? LSU? Yeah. No, Alabama. Alabama. I, I knew, knew, I knew the SEC, SEC got one there. in there. I was hoping to be Tennessee, but it's There's Alabama. two women. Yeah, well, it's one. LSU got beat in the Elite Eight. Did they? Mm -hmm. About Iowa, though. Uh, well, okay, I was no, there. Yeah, Caitlin Clark is no joke. Caitlin Clark got uh, Athlete of the Year. She deserved it. And they they play UConn. UConn women made the Final Four, too, but they played in the regular season in Iowa. Beat them pretty handily. I don't I don't think UConn will be able to stop her, either. That girl's averaging 32 points a game. Yeah, but that is unreal. That's average. Yeah. Think how hard that would be. to do. That's unreal. And she has a lot of help too like they really know how to get her the ball and she knows how to get her teammates the ball too because she's also the leader in assist yeah so that i mean that's a complete player well, right I, there i'm sure sometimes she has to dish it off she has to she has too many oh yeah they're right. actually fun to watch because their their offense is just so good you know yeah. so yeah they're that's the final four of the women is iowa uconn uh, South Carolina, the SEC, of course, is in the Final Four. They're undefeated. And uh, NC State. NC State women made the Final Four, too. Yeah, yeah, sure. And what's interesting about, well, kind of hate that. You know, they beat UTC in the first round, and then they beat the Lady Vols in the second round. NC State did. Yeah, Wes Moore, good. their coach, he used to coach you, UTC. UTC. Yeah. yeah. So this is their first Final Four. Well, we got to the Sweet 16, the men did, by beating Texas. Yeah, that, great, was, that was a that great was game. That was in the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. And on Monday, our Tennessee women... Uh, That's what they're at. They lost in the second round. Okay. That uh, what you're going to talk to NC State. Yep. Uh, but Tennessee played Creighton, and that put in the men's, in the yes. Elite Eight. That put, yeah, the men made the Elite Eight for the second time, second time. in school history. In school Bruce history. Pearl was the first one to take us there. Now Rick Barnes, man, I was hoping we can make the Final Four, but we ran into Purdue. We ran into Purdue, but Connect had 26 points in that game over uh, uh, Creighton. Yeah, yeah. Then on Sunday, we played Purdue, and Purdue put us out. It was a close game. 72 to 66. Yeah, it's six not points. like they, it was just 80, a seven foot four or five, I mean, seven, that's seven. hard to stop. It's just hard to stop. Well, you can't stop. No, until they did everything Unless they could. Unless you had a 7'5". Exactly. <laughs> and as a theme, when we've talked about this, Papa, every time Tennessee loses, Connect does his job. You know, he gets his points, but the others don't. And that's his. Nobody else was in double figures. I started to say, if you had one or two more in double figures, yeah. 10 or 12 points. Yes, they'd have won. But uh, all the other four players. There's no excuse for it. Less, than, less than double I, figures. It's, it's not, that's not consistent enough. And they're open because he's double and triple teamed. Yes. So there's no excuse for them not to be scoring more points because he scored a whole lot of points. Maybe he doesn't give enough assists. Uh, he tries. I just <laughs> I don't know what it is, but but I was afraid that would happen. I knew if they were going to lose, it'd be because of that. Four days ago on uh, Monday, April the first, mm -hmm. uh, April Fool's Day, Kelly Harper got fired. Yes, and I told you I thought at first that it might be an April Fool's Day joke, but it's not, folks. And I am happy about it 
But uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, not heard, gonna lie. I've not heard one word about anybody we've approached. They're being, they're taking their time this time, and they're being tight-lipped. I like that because I like this this athletic director. He, I just like his statement. He's he's basically said since Pat Summit, you know. He talks about how the Lady Vols, traditionally, they're the winningest program in women's basketball history. And Pat Summit built that program from the ground up. And he just talked about how we've been mediocre ever since she had to step down. Uh, so, And he's right. Yeah. He's right. And it's been going on too long. You know, it's, we're, it's been going on over 10 years now. Enough's enough. Holly couldn't get it done. Holly could recruit, but she couldn't coach. Kelly could coach, but she can't recruit. So you gotta have, you gotta have a coach that can do both to be at the winningest program in the country. Unless you, know? you had someone on your staff that could do one or the other. Right, and I, as I've said, and it was my concern when they hired Kelly Jolly, her husband. Her husband is a, a very big weakness for her. She wants him. She always wants him on her staff, but he just doesn't get it done. He was one of the recruiting coordinators. He, he cannot uh, recruit. He just can't. So okay. it, it was for the best. I love Kelly Jolly. Listen, great player. Hey, she was part of the three peat. You know, was she? Yeah. Make, and I, I don't have anything against Kelly Jolly at all. But it was the right move. It was for Tennessee to get back to where they used to be. They're going to have to find a a, re, a proven coach that can get it done. Well, someone with credentials would want to be with Tennessee yes. because of the size of the yeah. The, oh, absolutely. The facilities. Yeah. And, uh, the tradition. All the of tradition. It. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be interesting. <clears throat> yeah. On uh, Tuesday, number three Connecticut upset USC. Oh, and the women. Yeah. Eighty to seventy-three. And that, that put them in the final four. I right? know. I'm not for them. I'm never for them to win a championship. So they're going to play Iowa. I want to be yes, for Iowa. I am too. And they played in the final. Actually, it, I, it was saying on there, UConn women played all all the other three teams in the Final Four and lost all three of them. <laughs> well, UConn has been to the Final Four 23 times. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing new. Um, I think uh, they're, they don't have a lot of size. Uh, Iowa has some big old girls that give them problems. Of course, they couldn't stop Kaylin Clark when they no. played. Can you tell me anybody that can? Yeah, nobody's been able to. And I know South Carolina demolished UConn when they played because of the size. They could but not now, compete the with the thing size. about Caitlin Clark, she, if, I don't think people pick her up quickly mm. enough when she gets across the center line. I don't know. She shoots some deep threes. <laughs> deep threes. Uh, nothing I've ever seen. Okay. So it'll be NC State and South Carolina in the other fight yeah. for the women. I, I would think yeah, South, be South Carolina, Carolina should go all the way. I just, I, I do, it's hard to imagine South Carolina not winning the national championship. I think the team that matches up the best with them of the ones that left is Iowa. I think they're the ones that have had the best shot at it. That would be a good game. It would be. But uh, also, the SEC has one team in the mids final four, yeah. and that's Alabama. Alabama could whip it up. They could. I'd love to see it. Now, you'll never hear me say that in football. But now, they've never been to the Final Four in men's basketball. I would love to see them win the national championship. That'd be awesome. Okay, in addition to... Uh Caitlin Clark getting player of the year. Mm -hmm. Dawn Staley got coach of the year. Oh, surprising at that. Undefeated. Uh, Once again. South Carolina, if you can go through the SEC undefeated, mm -hmm. you're doing well. And that was another thing, you know, the athletic director was talking about, like, South Carolina has replayed, like, ever, ever since Pat Summit, you know, had to step down. Um, South Carolina has replaced the Lady Vols as the powerhouse of the SEC. Oh, yeah. So if you go you know, undefeated, you got to be you got to be a powerhouse. Yeah. And I didn't realize like it said that they had won the SEC championship like eight out of the last ten years. I mean that's just that's dominating. That's dominating. Yeah. It becomes old hat to you, but but mm -hmm. at the same time it could cause some intimidation among yeah. whoever you played. It, yeah, and it does. It does. I'm sure it does. 
Okay, that's all I have in sports. All right, all right. Albert, let's hear some Albertology from you. <laughs> I found this in one of my jacket pockets. I don't know who Tammy was. <laughs> Listen, I don't know who Tammy is. That's funny. But Tammy gave this to me. Love overflows and joy never ends right. in a house that is blessed with family and friends. Well, that's a beautiful saying. It's a beautiful it? thought. But very hilarious. Someone that named Tammy gave that to me. Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> Whoever you are. Come I love it. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. That's funny. <laughs> okay. This this happened. This these are, are strange things I'm gonna tell you about. Are they true saying? They're true. Well that's what'll make them funny, I'm sure. A twenty two year old Green Bay man. Mm -hmm. led police on a chase uh -oh. that moved so slowly that it got down to 20 miles an hour <laughs> and he he took them to the Brown County Jail parking lot <laughs> got out of his pickup truck smoked a cigarette Are you kidding? <laughs> and then laid face down on the ground <laughs> to be arrested he wow. told police when they got there he said I was drunk and I just turned myself in <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good right there. Sylvain Butcher of Quebec mm -hmm. was spotted by prison guards standing between the prison wall mm -hmm. and the outer fence. Uh -oh. So they were assuming that he was trying to get out. Yeah. So no they good. grabbed him and then they discovered he was not a, an inmate. Uh oh. He was carrying a large bag of drugs, wanting to get in his cell. <laughs> so he'll never. He'll. He had a. He he uh -oh. tried to break in, thinking the prison would be a good market That's for his funny. drugs. Now he'll find out because he has the supply, but no market. Exactly. He's an inmate now for sure. <laughs> oh this, man. This man was 18 years old. His name was Palestini. And he what lived name? in Portland, Maine. <laughs> he walked into the Salem District Court to face one criminal charge, but walked out in handcuffs with two. <laughs> the reason they <laughs> they found a hypodermic needle and two small bags of what police believed was heroin. So he went Boy, just, <laughs> he just went in because of one charge, but he walked out with two. Oh wow! These are some dumb criminals right there. <laughs> There's a program on a program on television about dumb criminals. Yeah, it's funny too. It is. <laughs> this really happened now. Mm -hmm. In early 2002, New Zealand had a, a person that was named James Story. And he called the New Zealand Telcon Corporation to complain that his cell phone had been disconnected. Okay. When the representative informed him that the phone had been reported stolen, <laughs> Story said he still had the phone and that he had not reported it being stolen. Right. So the mistake was cleared up, but the representative was mm -hmm. offended by the attitude of Story because oh, really? he said, my, I didn't report my phone to, uh, right. stolen. So this is what Story did. <laughs> Story received his next phone bill and he found that he'd been charged an extra $140. Whoa. What for? The explanation was printed right on the bill. Penalty for being an arrogant bastard. <laughs> She wasn't playing. <laughs> they didn't like his attitude. They he must have had a really lousy attitude. So they billed him forty one hundred and forty dollars. Man alive. And that's a true story, <laughs> <That's>, guys. <laughs> on uh, one evening in June two thousand and three, Wayne and Darlene Keller of Corona, California, mm -hmm. took their two children to a Sizzler's restaurant. Okay. Mrs. Keller requested vegetables with her dinner mm -hmm. instead of potatoes. Yeah. According to the family, the waiter, his name was Jonathan Boltner, okay. 
he rudely told her that she had to choose between french fries and a baked potato. Oh, well. When I t so Mr. Keller said, my wife can't eat potatoes. Right. So he brought her back a really small salad, practically threw it at her. Whoa. And told her to get the dressing herself. Dang, the, what a sorry way. So after the meal, they didn't leave him a tip. I'd say not. I'd so say not. So Boldner and his girlfriend followed Keller, had his girlfriend follow the Kellers to their home. And when he got off of work, she told him where they lived. What? So he got his brother and his girlfriend and himself, and they went to the Keller home. They waited until one o'clock in the morning, and then they doused their house, their yard, and their mailbox with a gallon of maple syrup, smashed eggs, toilet paper, duct tape, and plastic wrap. God! They might have gotten away with it, <laughs> but in a state of heightened stupidity, <laughs> Bolner rang the doorbell. Uh, then he hid in the bushes. Oh, he wanted to see how they reacted. I see bet. their reaction. So this is what they reacted with. Okay. They called the police. Right. <laughs> and so the police got there and they found Boltner in the bushes <laughs> and his co-conspirators, his brother and his girlfriend, in a car nearby. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> then they right. took all three of these people and presented them to the Kellers. And the, the Mrs. Keller said, "Oh my God, it's the waiter from the restaurant." <laughs> yeah. So they were charged with vandalism. It's crazy. And Volner got an extra charge. His girlfriend was underage, <laughs> so he was also fired from the restaurant. I'd say so. He got what he deserved. Boy, is that something. And he was he was the one in the wrong anyway. <laughs> God, that's oh. crazy. Jane White was upset that Jehovah's Witnesses had come to her home once a month for 12 years. <laughs> once a month. At first, she politely told them she did not want right. their product. Mm -hmm. They were trying to get her interested in their literature. Mm -hmm. So finally, after a visit on in January, on Saturday of 2002, she said she had enough. So the next day, she went to their church. Mm -hmm. They were having service. She knocked loudly on the door, kept knocking until finally they let her in. She proceeded to send them, hand them some literature for 30 minutes. <laughs> and finally, one of the members called the police and the, she told the police, I just tried to hand out free magazines just mm -hmm. like they did to me. Yeah. They did it for 12 years, right. and nobody seemed to want them when I offered them to them. Right. And so the police just said, please leave. <laughs> so she left. She made her point, though, that's for sure. She made her point. <laughs> okay, you ready that's for some jokes? For some jokes? Yeah, it's going to be hard to top those. Because <laughs> they were, were just true stories. When they're true like that. <laughs> This is crazy, isn't it? Okay, here we go. <laughs> well, that waiter store, I still can't believe that one. Man. He gave his name. Yeah. He didn't give his girlfriend's name or his, more for, or his brother's <laughs> name. Stepping from my kitchen into the garage, mm -hmm. I accidentally locked myself out of the house. <laughs> I had an 18-month-old son, and I tried to uh -oh. persuade him to unlock <laughs> the door, to open the door for me. Well, that could but go on either the way. The 18-month-old boy didn't listen to him. <laughs> so finally, he's walking around the house to check to see if any window is unlocked where he could get in. And he finally walked around the house to the front of the house, mm -hmm. and he found the front door open. Oh. And Taylor, the 18-month-old boy, was standing in the door with mm -hmm. the salesman. With the salesman? And, <laughs> and so... Uh, the man said to the salesman, how did you get in? He said, I just rang the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> just rang the doorbell. That's Which what he should have done. done. <laughs> when my daughter Rebecca was three years old, mm -hmm. we moved to another town. 
I was concerned about finding a new pedi pediatrician and spoke to several neighbors who recommended a doctor for me. Mm -hmm. Five minutes into her examination, I was pleased how well Rebecca was responding to the physician. Mm -hmm. He talked gently to her and explained everything he was doing. Mm -hmm. When it came time to test her reflexes, the doctor said, Rebecca, I'm going to lightly hit your knee with a hammer. The Rebecca, hammer. <laughs> she let out a blood curdling scream. Shaken, the pediatric pediatrician asked her, What did I do? And so I said, Her daddy is a carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> a hammer. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> On a business trip to California, mm -hmm. I realized that I had forgotten my wife's birthday the day before. Up to that Assuming I was in big trouble, mm -hmm. I went to the jewelry section of a San Francisco department store. After explaining to the saleswoman that I desperately needed a gift to make up for my forgetfulness, mm -hmm. she said, I'm sorry, but we don't have anything that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you, you messed yourself up big time, boy. Yeah, he was really in the doghouse then. <laughs> You know, I never <laughs> forgot Carolyn's birthday. I never forgot her, mm -hmm. our anniversary. Mm -hmm. I never forgot Christmas or Valentine. And well, I hope not on those two. But let me tell you what. Yeah, my, you're really good on that. My wife said, don't ever buy me flowers. Don't mm -hmm. ever buy me candy. She, Take me out to eat. That's right. She was smart. <laughs> <laughs> on a cold, snowy night in Manhattan, my friend Thea was to pick up her new station wagon. I called to see how she made out. Mm -hmm. I said, did you get the car? Mm -hmm. Yes, she replied excitedly. It's oh, right what? out in front of our apartment building and we, are just, we were just on our way down to sit in it. We're going to sit in it. <laughs> we're not going to drive it though. Yeah, mm -hmm. I replied, I guess the weather is pretty lousy. Right. It's not that. We just don't want to lose our parking space. Now shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty dang good right there. They need a parking garage. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. I bought my sons a pet rabbit after they promised they would take care of it. Oh, I bet they did. <laughs> As expected, I ended up with a responsibility. Right. Exasperated one evening, I said, how many times do you think that rabbit would have died if I hadn't looked after her? Once, our <laughs> son replied. A good point. <laughs> I would say that would be enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that wasn't the answer he was looking for, though. Death is kind of fun. That's funny. <laughs> I had I had an unusual experience. Surely not. Long, not. not long after Eddie Albert died in nineteen uh, two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh, Carolyn died in thirteen. Mm -hmm. And after day Eddie died, my pastor one Wednesday night was already teaching. Yeah. He already opened up the scripture. He stopped, got a chair, came in front of me and sat down in that chair. Mm -hmm. Backwards. He, 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 he turned the chair backwards and sat where yeah. he could face me. Right. He said, Albert, I want you to tell all of us how you handle the death of your wife and your son. Dang, talk about I, being put on the spot. I never had thought about it. Oh all. yeah, dang. But it is, this was what God gave me to say to my pastor, and he never bothered me anymore about it. <laughs> uh, I said, Brother Jim, Carolyn's been dead since 2013. I've mm -hmm. had time to deal with that. Yeah. And I said, uh, two days before she died, I gave her permission to die. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we all had to do that. Okay, but I said... And listen, I, folks, my nanny, who he's talking about, she held out until Eddie Albert told her bye. She waited on all of us to tell her bye, and then she passed away. I'll never forget that. Wow. Never. Okay, um, but I said, I'm still dealing with Eddie Albert's death. Right, yeah, of course. 
But I've, I've learned I, I mean, accepted. yeah. I've I, learned to accept it. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. For uh, a 93-year-old woman, by the way, Jolene mm -hmm. told me today that mm -hmm. her daddy is 99. Oh, happy birthday, and, Jolene's daddy. And he said that he, she told me that he gets up every morning at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. and drives to the YMCA in Chattanooga. Wow, that's good. It works out. That's good. That's at good. Ninety years of age. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. I can't even yeah. know ninety. Ninety. Oh, I thought you said ninety nine. Well, still, that's good. And his his wife will be ninety. Her birthday. Well, that's good. But can you believe he goes and works out? It's all I can do to get in the car. You, you stay busy though. A ninety. You stay busy. A ninety three year old woman who had to go into the hospital briefly mm -hmm. for a minor ailment told her daughter that she was thinking about changing doctors oh really i've doctored with this doctor for 40 years <laughs> and i'm not a bit better now <laughs> that's I, tell, I, can't. I don't think she's going to make it any better that's pretty dang good this be the last one all right while traveling through missouri mm -hmm. we stopped for lunch at a local cafe right in a booth behind us sat four elderly men okay. whose conversation revolved around the problems of the community, the state, and the nation all together. Oh, wow. Well, there's one thing we don't have to worry about anymore, I heard one of them say to the other, we ain't gonna die young. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good, Papa. <laughs> Even the, the true stories were good. They were jokes this week. <laughs> Those crack me up because it's just it's amazing the stupidity of people sometimes. It, it? It, it really is. <laughs> it really is. Well, That's folks, right. thanks for <clears throat> joining us today. Oh, program uh, note for radio listeners. Um, at 5, you can listen to uh, the Lady Warriors softball on the radio, Mike Smith will have the call for you. As uh, the Lady Warriors, they are hosting Brainerd this afternoon. That'll be at five o'clock. Uh, Lady Warriors, go down there and check them out. Uh, other home games, well worth the, uh, well worth it. A lot of talent on that team. They've been to the state tournament the last three years. Uh, definitely, more than likely, will be again this year. So they go check them out. They're very good, very they, good team. They've had a taste of it. Though. They want to go back. That's right, and they play. They played a very tough schedule, uh, pre you know, going into the district play, which is smart. And so they do have some losses this, you know, this year early on. But that's good. They they play scheduled really tough teams. It was in a tournament, and that's all. That's going to do is make them better. Yeah. It's just going to make them better. So, but yeah, check them out. Uh, the, Go down there and watch them, or you can listen live here on WUAT. That'll be at five of the Lady Warriors against Brainerd. Well, folks, uh, that's it for this episode. We'll see you guys next time. Until then, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you guys next time. See you later. Hey, folks, Albert and Billy here. You're watching us on Channel 18, BTC Fiber. Check us out on BTC Fiber YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and like. And check out our Facebook page. Be sure to like and share. Thanks, everybody, for watching.